The Eye of the Storm beta update is out now, everyone, and is seemingly being met with some mixed feelings. And it's nothing too bad, mind you, but I do kinda get it. The content does seem to be split into two separate interests, if you want to think of it like that, even given how one leads to the other. And I have seen many debates about whether it's all worth it, or even if it's too worth it for Pete's sake. And folks, I can't really answer that for ya. But I can lay some things out to help you answer that one way or another. Like how do we even get to this point? Is the new Celestial Champion nothing more than a time dump? And is the loot enough to actually justify everything that's about to follow? Well, let's find out. And to do so, we must spawn the dang new Big Bad, of course, and there is but one way to do so. Bringing together the three Celestial Altars. Now, the first altar ever to be introduced to the game was the one on the Lunar Island, mined from the inviting formations in three separate parts. So, here's our first destination, I suppose. But bring all three pieces together and construct them in the proper order to begin what will be a much harder journey from here on out. But yes, this is by far the easiest one. Oh, but be absolutely sure to build these altars near one another too. Otherwise, everything that's gonna follow here will be for nothing. Cause trust me, we've barely begun folks. The next altar to release was the Celestial Tribute dropped by the Crab King here. A boss that can essentially spawn anywhere out on the ocean as it dang pleases, even though he is supposed to spawn in only swell waters. But finding them can be an absolute pain. But finding them is also less than half the actual task at hand. We also need to hop to yet another island, Pearl's Island. But thankfully that is extremely easy, as a simple reading of a message in a bottle out on the water is all it takes for the game to literally tell you where it is. Thing is though, you will have to sail to it of course, and quite frankly, you're going to be doing a lot of that pretty much between every single step. So factor that in for sure. But one must also consider how finding Pearl actually means nothing unless you have a general idea of how to actually progress through her friendship quest via completing specific tasks for her. Now, if you don't know how to do this, then there's no point in continuing. Why? Well, because only a level 9 friendship with her can lead to her giving us her pearl, and this pearl is the only thing that makes the Crab King drop his celestial tribute, folks. Oh, and he happens to drop it in the ocean, too. And it is only retrievable through a pinching winch bought from Pearl herself. So don't forget it. Then of course, one must return to the king, socket the pearl, socket whatever other gems they wish to in order to actually begin the fight, and then defeat the dang thing using whatever means necessary. Seriously, one shot the thing for all I care, as this is by far the worst step of this entire process here today. I still know tons of people who have yet to even progress before this new content came out due to this boss, and it's because he's simultaneously one of the best yet worst designed things in the entire game. But whatever the case, once you do serve some crab up for dinner, you must sail over to the underwater salvage with your pinching winch at the ready in order to pull the celestial tribute from the depths below. Then, yup. You guessed it, sail the thing all the way back to the Lunar Islands and your first constructed altar to then have your second one completed. And folks, you're only halfway there. No, not kidding, we're not even close to being done. But thankfully, our third and final altar is not as difficult as the previous one. Thing is though, the process is going to lead us to the caves and its newest biomes introduced in the Forgotten Knowledge updates, the Lunar Grotto, and the Ancient Archives. So unfortunately, if you can't run the caves, you're kind of screwed. But for those who can, we are off to those Ancient Archives of course. But to do what however? Well, to activate the dang things, of course. Issue here is that you will have had to have participated in the Moonstone event in order to transform a Starcaller staff that you made via an ancient pseudoscience station into a Mooncaller's one, only to then turn around and deconstruct the thing with yet another ancient staff craft for a third and final iridescent gem, as it were. And guess what? This can only happen on full moon nights, and you're probably not doing this on day 11. So, yep, 
Do the math. Then, after flushing a blue fountain of knowledge specifically, mind you, you will have to solve the ancient orchestrina puzzle in order to open a distilled knowledge ball for a craft called the Astral Detector. Now this thing can actually locate all celestial altarpieces in the game, even the Crab Kings, before we ever socket Pearl's Pearl. But its main job is to locate the two pieces of our final altar, the Celestial Sanctum. Now the key word is two pieces, mind you. But it's pretty self-explanatory otherwise, as the thing literally points you in the right direction. But now, it's finally time, folks. Bring these final two pieces together, and then, and only then, will all three activate to spawn in the mysterious energy. This process also puts the world in a perpetual full moon situation for only a day though, mind you, but leads to full moons every night, which is something we'll be talking about here soon. But our main concern for now are these, folks. Moonstorms. They will form randomly on the map, and they are our final destination, actually. And yes, mine spawning in the frickin' swamps was annoying. So thanks, game. Appreciate it. But we enter these violent storms for three reasons. Moon gleams, infused moon glass, and Wagstaff himself. Now, moon gleams are the tiny electrical orb things floating around that can be caught via bug nets, while the infused moon glass is mined from charged glassy rock following lunar lightning strikes. Unfortunately, the latter spoils in like six seconds and it sucks, so be mindful there and be sure to use some bundling wrap. But Wagstaff is who we must follow to have him lead us to the actual Moonstorm event, folks, in which we fight waves upon waves of new lunar birds for something called Restrained Static. And yes, it can be a tough fight for sure. So I'm gonna add some insult to injury. You gotta do it twice. And you know what? Moonstorms move each time you help Wagstaff. So have fun. Oh, oh yeah. And remember how I said Moonstorms were actually our last destination? Well, I lied. Because you'll also have to check your meteor fields for the suspicious boulder here in order to collect the celestial orb at some point too. And holy crap, this is a lot. And I'm just listing things for a guy too. I'm not even playing the game for real and surviving if you know what I mean. But finally, we're here folks. We can complete the incomplete experiment and place it on the mysterious energy, complete the lunar siphonator build, and then construct the last thing that I totally forgot the name of. Of. And then, and only then, are we worthy to face down the Celestial Champion, folks. Codename the Alter Guardian, Alter with an E, mind you. It's got three phases, all with 10,000 plus health and each dealing over 100 damage a hit. Thing is, though, it isn't hard. It's just time consuming. Seriously, phase three is the only phase that could present some real problems as it's the only phase that doesn't actually see us just running around to dodge everything every 10 seconds. Take phase one here, for example, as it's all about running around, really, as it loves to do this rolly move that we can easily sidestep. Then following that, it tends to do a short range set of slams that are also very easy to avoid. And on occasion, it will do this Gestalt attack that also has a very short range to it compared to the others, all the while really not presenting a problem whatsoever. So get your 8 to 9 hits in after its slam attack and you're gonna be totally fine. Trust me. Ah. But Sneaky Clay here seems to have went and altered phase two, everyone. Either that, or I got extremely unlucky by never seeing its melee attack like before. But the heck am I on about? Well, this phase has always been about this spinning slide maneuver that we could easily dodge by simply running away in a straight line. But it used to follow it up with a normal melee attack, only that is no longer the case it seems. Now, it would just simply alternate between its Moon Glass Spike ability and Gestalt Wave Attack after these sliding maneuvers over and over and over again. It is a super simple pattern, yes, but it's so annoying that it just constantly does this sliding attack that takes so much time to just run away from. And we've also lost our own good damage phase, really. Now, we gotta wait for every other set of attacks to get in roughly six to seven hits ourselves while it's doing its spike attack because the spike attack is actually ranged. So you can stand right next to it and you'll be fine. 
Now, avoiding the Gestalt attack could be kind of annoying. It looks like it has a little more reach than it did, but don't quote me on that. But again, if you just run away and kind of sidestep it here and there, you're going to be fine. This phase is still very, very easy. It's just still a lot of running and waiting. But thankfully, phase three here has stayed the same, roughly. I say roughly only because it did seem to gravitate towards its lunar meteors a little more, but that was more at the start of the fight. In the middle and at the end, it pretty much played out exactly the same at the end of the day. And remember, this thing has three separate laser attacks for when we are at range, and its Gestalt ability is the largest of the three, so be mindful there. If you see blue smoke, just run to the outside of the smoke. You'll be fine. Otherwise, you are highly advised to just stick as close to it as you possibly can to simply kite its melee attack, as you can see. And if need be, have it shoot its own meteors with its lasers, or just mine them yourself to avoid any trouble there. Just keep up the consistent damage to prevent it from moving too much, folks. I know it's easier said than done at the start of the fight than maybe here and there but you will get it down. If anything, get like six hits, run away, but bring it down for a crap ton of moon glass, moonstone, all celestial altarpieces, the celestial orb, and something called the enlightened crown. But now, the celestial orb will actually begin to act as a portable celestial altar, folks, something that I missed in our previous video, and that is freaking awesome. But the crown will also provide infinite durability, infinite light, and the ability to spawn Gestalts with each hit for additional damage. It's not armor though, so be mindful there. And maybe that's what they should change. Make it an armor piece too. But yeah, is it enough? Is it not enough? Is the process too much for it all? I don't know folks. I honestly see both sides of the thing clear as day. I just get the feeling, though, that the crown is but one piece of an entire set that we will soon be decked out in, if you know what I mean. So I'm holding out hope there. But whatever the case, it doesn't get more endgame than this, really. All that work, it's gonna take you a while. Trust me, don't let the video fool ya. But thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. More update talk coming, as well as more specific Celestial Champion discussions. And I'll see ya. In the next one, bye-bye.